Okay, guys, welcome back. Previous week, we start talking about machine learning and trying to define the concept and the different options that we have to make the computer to learn. In particular, I move to review in detail how the neural network work. What is a neural network? And I just want to remind you, my goal right now is not for you to be experts with the neural network. My goal is if we can explain that the neural network is basically linear algebra, therefore we understand how to program that. And if that one is one of our most complex options, you can imagine that the same principles that we're going to review here regarding programming implementation apply to all the others. And there are two important things. And I want to focus on them this week. Number one, the quality that you are looking forward in the part of the system that is going to be related with learning is performance, not design. One of the things that I mentioned before, and you're going to notice in what is coming, is that part of the system that is going to be doing the learning thing, the model, the machine learning. If you need to decide between using objects or not, probably there are not going to be objects involved there. All of that is going to be encapsulated in one element. One object or other thing, but objects are bad for performance. And you're going to notice that in what I am going to show you at the implementation of the neural network. I am opening the box to show you what is inside. And you're going to notice my objects, your objects are bad idea for performance. The rest of the system, and I want to show you that also, in the rest of the system, the graphical user interface, the connection with other elements, etc. There, we need to put together objects with the learning part. So I want to review that again with the neural network, just because it's complex, right? It should be something complex. So if we can review that one, take apart and understand what is happening, the other should be easier, or at least similar. But moving in that direction. Previous lecture, something that we review, something that I share with you, is at the end, the learning thing that we are reviewing, what we call learning in terms of my computer, my systems, is going to be to separate populations, to separate data, to have data. And one of two things are going to happen. Either I already know the input and the output, like the dots and the color of the dots, and what I want to do with the computer is give a lot of examples. And after several examples, the computer understand can classify a new data as a red or as a blue. Classification is one thing that we're looking for. I give you examples and later you understand the rule, you follow the rule and you can classify. Or you can create clusters. I have no idea about the difference between those data, but I give you the data and then please put groups and those groups are going to be whatever category classification or ideas or separation that you can implement right do you remember those key ideas classification and clustering we start with that each of these axes x and y you can imagine that this one column in an excel data file that is something that i mentioned before this data there is basically an excel with two columns each column is X or Y. What happened about the result? The color of the dot, red or blue. You can imagine that that one is the third column, the Y column. The other two, the inputs. Uh, what if I have more columns? You have more dimensions. And that can become complex. But at the end, the idea applies the same. The only thing that you do, that we are doing, and we start with this, or we finish with this previously, is, well, neural network, one layer, two, more. What we are trying to create is this line that help us to separate one population from the other. Why? Because having this line, that equation, the coefficients for that equation is going to help us 
to classify above or below the line or inside or outside, however you want it, from new data. We're looking for that equation, that time. Uh, using the neural net, as we reviewed before, and I explained to you the neural net with the math, the crazy things that we put in the whiteboard before. Uh, we need to move that to programming. We need to review how that work in software. So we're going to do that, don't worry. But my point right now is these things that we're doing, these lines with the neural nets, uh, I mentioned to you before, if you think about decision tree, what you are doing with the tree is trying to figure out the same idea, the same line. And if you think about more complex scenarios in which, for instance, you put together several trees and you create a forest, random forest. The only thing that you are doing is to put several trees, several things like the above, and then use a new approach, mathematical approach, to put together all these different uh, magenta lines in only one in yellow. Assuming that the combination of all of them, the trees, is going to be helpful. Or maybe you're going to select one tree because that tree represents exactly the yellow one. Searching for a line to separate populations. Now, the example is showing you two populations, one line, but you apply the same principle to more dimensions and you are solving the problem. Now, that is classification. What happened with the other clustering? Uh, same idea. The only thing that is new, the only thing that we need to review how to do is you need to found in this population particular points and group around them, all the elements that are close. And you're going to call that a cluster, right? Uh, you can imagine that connecting or putting together the elements that are close to one of these X. It's kind of easy, you just calculate the distance and all of that that are close to me, that close to them are going to be mine. You separate elements. But the hardest part is going to be to define which ones are going to be our X or where are going to be the X. Don't worry, there are ways to calculate that. We're going to review it, but the principle looks like, okay, this is not a line. This is more like the closest to me are mine and there are going to be every single one belonging to another, to another group. The distance, an equation. Calculate the distance from each of those elements to the center of the blues or the reds or the greens. It's going to be linear algebra. It's going to be a matrix. The same equation again and again. Now, Hopefully those ideas, you got it from what we reviewed before. We're going to go back to that. Before continue, at this point, it's a good idea to talk about software engineering. Because hopefully at this point, you have a very good kind of context of what's happening or what we need for machine learning. Mathematics, linear algebra, yeah. Software engineering. Our goal here is not machine learning per se. It's not the name of the class. We want to do software. And that is the first element for us. Talking about software, our main concern is the things in red. Our main concern is to design something. It's not for testing. It's not a prototype. It's an application. It's going to go to the market. And I need to create something that is easy to extend, escalate, and easy to maintain. I need to apply all this knowledge about software design implementation, but moreover, my goal is to use the tools that I know, tools including libraries and frameworks, right? Uh, again, we don't care about what is inside of the box. At this point, we can close the box and our concern is connect that box with other boxes but we need to keep an eye on the performance because something that could happen is if we just connect the box and forget what is inside, we can forget that that box 
is not using objects, not in the way that we use for other things. And we can crash the performance. I need to show you what I am talking about. Let's see. Do you remember this source code that I showed you in the previous lecture? Do you remember that I showed you basically how to use a framework, a library? Don't worry, we're going to review it in detail later. But I show you this library. Let me. Better? Better? Yeah. Now, I showed you this before. It's a library. Uh, I need to review the library in detail, but you notice the main steps. The data set, create an object. We use the builder pattern in order to configure that object, and then use the object. Use the object for training and use the object for testing. In particular, this training, the feed. Did you remember that I mentioned this forward propagation, backward propagation? We explain how this thing is working inside, right? Tell me, this program is in one class? More than one class? Is one program or more than one program? That one, hopefully you agree with me, is one method. Is one simple trivial method that is going to be one element like this in your software. Uh, it's a method, but that method should be inside of a class. And if I am going to have only one method, probably it's going to be my main method. The source code that I showed you before is one class, one method, those instructions, done. Uh, what about the construct? and all those stuff. I do not need it. The only thing that I am doing is to use two classes, outside classes, uh, the network and the data set uh, using, remember, in the main, done. Question, this program, what is the goal of the program? Create a model, train a model. Did you remember that at the end, what we did was to save the model? Can you agree with me that every single time that you are going to create a software that is going to be smart, there is going to be one program to train the model and a different program using the model? Unless you want to do reinforced learning. But in the normal scenario, the same program, the one that is training, the one that is going to use a lot of resources, loop, GPUs, whatever, is not the same that needs to use the model. Something that you do, something that we need to learn to do, store the models, store the coefficients of the equation. We do not need to calculate those every single time that the program starts. Clear. So your program that is going to do the training, the learning, storing the coefficient, calculating the coefficient, is going to be something as simple as this, a program with a main. Moreover, if you do not like Java, this program can be something else. MATLAB if you want, Python if you want. Just create the model, get the coefficients, done. Your problem as a software engineer is really going to be, okay, these are the coefficients. They were calculated in Python or in MATLAB or whatever. Here are the numbers. I need to put these numbers in a format in which I can use them as an input for another framework in which here, in Java or whatever language I am using for the application, I need to load the model. Here, I am using the same framework for the neural nets, a framework for Java. And I am using the same framework to save the model and to load the model later. It is not mandatory. Worst case scenario, I need to translate a model doing with another tool to the format that this framework needs. Your problem as a software engineer is to mash the format, to load the model somehow. But you do not need to be doing the training always. You can do the training, obviously. Not mandatory, clear. Now, the application for the training is the one in which I can ignore 
my good practices with objects because it's the one that need to perform well. It's the one in which the time is important. But if I ask you to do this application with a model that you create that represents a neural net that identify numbers, uh, let me be clear what I want. In some point, could be your homework. What if I ask you for this Java application, desktop application, in which I can draw with the mouse number here? And then you told me, what is the number? You print the result of the neural net. Uh, for my application here, I am drawing here. For my application here, you know, whatever you draw here, you need to transform to a picture, an image, the one in blue. And then that one is the one that is being compared with the different collection of data sets. And this is the result that I'm getting. What if I ask you to do something like this? Uh, yes, you need a neural net. Maybe I ask you to use that one. You, you need the model. You're going to train that model outside of this application. That is clear. Unless you want to train your model drawing the numbers again and again and again for yourself, provide the data set which is a very bad idea because you need a lot of data. You do not want to be drawing numbers all day or for weeks or months. What could be this application in terms of design? And what I want to be clear here is something like this. The application in which the learning is going to be one part, the color part, should be a design like this. Everyone understand the class diagram, right? I am assuming that one. Uh, when you're designing the application, the application is going to have three classes, the yellow ones, the blue ones are part of the library, and in particular, the red one is the same one that I used before for the training, remember? The neural net. That one is the one that is going to provide me the learning part. That one is the one that I'm going to use to create an object, neural net, and that one is the one that is going to load the model that I created before. That one in red is the only smart thing in the system. Uh, even though the full system is around that learning and identifying the numbers, it's a very small part of what I need to do. And it's the only part in which I forget about design. But everything else is object oriented follow the rules that you know, that you implement. Uh, in particular, if you remember, what I show you is an application that is a graphical user interface, the frame. What I show you is an application that probably have a menu, action listen. What I show you is an application that is showing you a result, the number that I identify, maybe a label. Uh, what I am showing you is this interface that have a drawing area. And that one could possibly be another class. I show you a number at the top, the panel in red, another class. And this one in which I am going to draw is going to identify my movements with the mouse, not listener, and other things. And the only one that needs to have access to the neural net is the one with the main, the big picture, the application that have everything. The application that is going to allow me to draw something it's going to read that, it's going to transform to an image, it's going to show me, it's going to use the neural net to calculate an output, and it's going to show me the output. Split the things in objects. One object, only one, need to have access to the smart part, to the smart components. Clear. Question, if I ask you to implement in Yao the application, the graphical user interface that I showed you before, can you do this? Professor, it's a machine learning class. Yes, but remember, software engineering, you are going to do full application. So you can do this. Can you use mouse listener? Draw things. You're not going to do it from scratch, but I just kind of want to measure if you are feeling comfortable with that. Okay, before we do that, this is going to be the complex part. 
let's see. Something that you are telling me a lot, again and again, is that I should put priority in the performance for the machine learning component. So I show you the solution for this identification of numbers. And you notice that there are a lot of objects, but I still show you the training, the neural net, and I am telling you, forget your objects. So something that we can do, so you can agree with me that we need to forget the objects, or at least you can notice why we are going to forget the objects, is going back to something that we did before. We're in this point in which my next step could be, guys, your homework, implement the application that I show you to identify the numbers. And if I ask you to do that, I will ask you to use a library. And then I need to show you the library. So we are in that path. But that is like asking you to use Java collections with data structures. What did you do before starting using Java collection with data structures? Implement a data structure from scratch. Why? No work is going to ask you to implement a data structure from scratch. You are never going to do that. You always are going to use libraries. Here we're going to do the same. But Hopefully you agree with me, it's a good idea before I start using a library to implement from scratch that linked list, stack or queue, just to know what is inside, just for that. So if you agree with me with that, then you could agree that before going back to the libraries and moving in that path, let's work from scratch. From scratch what? That guy. I explained to you how this guy works, right? We spent one lecture, full lecture, explaining how the neural network was. Every single detail, or more or less. Tell me, I need to implement a data structure. I need to implement a class, neural network. What is going to be inside? of my implementation for a neural network. How many classes do I need for the neural network? If I ask you as a homework, implement the neural network, as I explained to you before, remember that there is a loop and there are equations and coefficients and blah, blah, blah. What do you do? We need what? Yes. We're going to need that, variables, uh, maybe global in some class. Okay, let me start from the beginning. If I ask you to implement a link at least or a queue or something like that, remember that you always play with two classes, the class node and then your class list or the class node and the class stack, or whatever. Neural network. Do you think that we need a class node? Yes or no? Why not? That is the correct angle. Uh, remember that I mentioned performance is more important. Software engineers, the way that we teach you to solve a problem is to think in object oriented. The way that you solve a problem, any other problem, is with objects. And with objects, a uh, data structure is always a collection of nodes. And therefore, we need a class node. Because if we are going to create objects, we need the class. If I show you this neural network, for sure, you're thinking about, or I am thinking about a class node, because inside of the class node, I can have these coefficients, and I can have this equation, and I can have this rate learning, and all these things that I explained to you that are inside of a node. Moreover, if you want it, besides the node, also we have the layer. Because remember that the layer is kind of a collection of nodes. It's kind of a linked list of nodes. And each layer is going to have inputs and outputs that are common to all the nodes there. And then we have the neural net. So the neural net has layers. The layers has nodes. That looks like a beautiful representation of a neural network in terms of object-oriented programming. And as an engineer, as a software engineer, probably if I open this library 
that provide me access to neural network, those three classes, or at least two, the, re the network and the node, are things that I will expect to have there. But news, again, objects are a bad idea for the performance. You know what is going to happen? My class neural net, because my priority is performance, is going to be one class. One class, forget about nodes. What is going to happen with the nodes? That instead of having an object with three W's and another object with three W's and another object with three W's, I am going to put together all these W's in one single matrix. Why? Because it's easy to work with them. It's faster to process them in use one matrix. Professor, it's going to be harder to understand which W belongs to which node. Sorry, we're going to sacrifice abstraction and understanding because what we are looking for is the performance. Make sense? Uh, it's going to happen the same for all the system, not only for the neural net, only that, that the structure is going to be this crazy, forget object oriented. So if I ask you to implement that one, the first thing that you are going to consider is one class. Don't worry, we still can use metrics. Variables, most of your variables are going to be arrays. Uh, you still can do bidimensional arrays. They can be uh, converted in one dimensional later. Uh, we are not going to use the GPUs yet, so we can stay with the two dimensional. Good. Okay, can you imagine what I'm going to have inside of this class neural net, which are going to be my methods or my variables? One class, right? Variables. What kind of information do we need? The coefficients for the weights. Yes. Um, I am going to call it Ws. Uh, what else? The function. Uh, the function. What can be that function? A method? Like, you remember that we are using this sigma function. So can you agree that we maybe are going to have this method that could return a number and could receive some parameters? Uh, the inputs, there are some parameters there and I am going to have some kind of result. It's a function. Uh, what happened with this one? My neural network can support several activation functions and I can send as a parameter some constant, one, two, three, four, five, and the constant is going to tell me which of the methods to call. Uh, by the file, let's assume that we have only one, the sigma is a method. Good. What else? Learning. The what? Learning. We have a constant, right? Uh, can we think about this one being a variable? local or global, we can decide later, but it's going to be a number there, right? Uh, what else? Cost function. What? Cost function. Uh, something is going to happen with this one, with this one, with this one. Uh, we have more methods because we explain processes that happened before. Uh, separate the, met the process in different methods could be a good idea to separate the complexity of the different things that we need to do, right? Uh, do you remember that we talk about this forward propagation and backward propagation? Could you think that those two could become methods? Can I have a method forward propagation, a method backward propagation? Uh, I think that in some point I am going to need a main method to trigger everything. Yes? Okay. So, the 
what do you think about this proposal that I have for you? One class with something like that. Ah, you mentioned the, ne the learning rate. Uh, I put that as a variable. Uh, I am thinking about a constant 0.7. Ah, if you do not like the constant, you make a variable. Right? Passing the constructor, but you need it. Ah, do I need to know how many nodes do I have? How many inputs, nodes in the input layer? Do I need to know how many nodes do I have in the output layer? Do I need to know how many nodes do I have in the hidden layer? My class is a simple neural network. I am going to assume that I have only one layer in the middle, so only one hidden. So three layers, input, output, hidden, and I need to know how many nodes. Can I store that as some numbers that are global? It should be recommended. And I think so, because we're going to do loops. And those loops are going to be somehow controlled by how many nodes do you have, right? Object-oriented, professor, if I do object-oriented, and I have this layer, and the layer have five or 10 or 100 nodes, the only thing that I need to do is a loop, and that loop can go from the beginning to the end of the link at least. I do not need to store these numbers. Yeah, but you store these numbers, you forget your list, and the performance is going to be faster. That is what we are doing. Like, forget about your linked list. You have arrays. You need to store the size of the array. Numbers, the size, but also array values. Uh, can we store all the weights, all the Ws in one array, one dimension? Professor, what happened with the two dimensions that we reviewed before? Uh, the performance is better with one dimension. And what is going to happen? Three, one neuron, three, next neuron, three, next neuron. So when you have the array, the number nine here is the third value for the third neuron. You need to remember those coefficients. The values, the output, each neuron is going to have an output. The Ws, each neuron is going to have some Ws there that we are going to use. And someone asked me in the previous lecture, Professor, what about the bias? I put an array there for bias. Tell me, what is the bias? The offset. Yes. And how we translate that explanation, correct, to the equation? The bias along with the input in the sigmoid function. Yes. Remember that the bias is connected with the input, right? Uh, do you remember our equation? It's like we have a W multiplied for the input one, and then we add that with the W for the input two, and then we have as many input you have. Do you remember that in your equations, there is always the X and at the end plus a constant? The fancy name for that plus a constant is our bias. Ah, moreover. We can also put a W for that constant. Why? Because remember that the Ws are the one controlling the equations. The W is also going to control, well, while W is going to control our bias. What is going to be the initial value for the Ws? Random or constant? What is going to be the initial value for the bias? Random or constant. What is going to happen with that? It's going to be improved with the learning thing. Anyway, we have this. And we do the addition and we calculate the sig mode and then we are going to calculate the derivative. Things that we need to do here. But numbers, we need my Ws, we need my bias, we need the output for each of these guys. I am going to store those in the arrays. Professor, why are you going to store the outputs in an array? Because you're going to need the outputs in order to calculate the derivative coming later. Makes sense, right? The sizes, the values, 
and this constant for the learning rate that we described before here. Use the mathematical equation in a program computer. And my methods, uh, you told me that I need the function for the activation, the sigma. That is the one that I am using. Uh, you agree with me that I need forward propagation and backward propagation. Moreover, it's a class, it could be a good idea to have a constructor. The constructor could be the place for initializing everything, including these random numbers or constant numbers that we're going to use. And I mean, looks like that is going to be our neural net. Clear. Every single variable and method is clear. Okay, now if we put instructions inside, we're done. We can create a neural net. Let's see. From the diagram to the source code, this is going to be your class basic neural net. 124 lines. One hundred lines, a neural network. Pacman is one thousand two hundred. From the point of view of programming and software, is simple. The magic is not the software. The magic is the mathematics. The mathematics that we reviewed before. The software is the graphical user interface that I showed you before. Have more than that lines. In terms of source, source code lines, uh, you could think like, okay, the lines of code, the other one is more complex than this one. Uh, remember that one thing is lines of code and a different thing is cyclomatic complexity and a different thing is the estimation of how many times or resources you need to do something that could be one line. Okay, uh, 124 lines of code, show me. The constructor. Constructor, yeah. Uh, I am going to put this well, before the constructor, my main. Uh, what I am doing here. The main is the one that control everything, right? Do you remember what we have in the main when we use the library? Do you remember that the first thing that we have is the data sets? We're going to train a new neural network, right? Because the previous one, what I showed you, the data structure is empty. We want to train one. The first thing that we need is the data, the data that we're going to use to train the thing. Good? Okay. Training. Data sets. My data sets are at the top. Array. You know what is the simple example that you're going to found to explain neural network? The hello world for neural network is going to be this neural network that is going to train the computer to identify the XO. That is going to tell the computer that zero and zero should be a series the output. Two inputs, one output. That zero and one, the output should be one, one and zero, the output should be one. One and one, the output should be zero. Did you remember that someone teach you this? Not exactly the XR, but the AND, the OR, and so on. You can be thinking, okay, in order to implement that in a system, I can use a couple of if, else, and done. Yeah, the point is, if you use the if, else, you are hard coding the intelligence. What we are doing here is forget the hard coding and use a loaded machine to learn, to create an equation. I want to teach my computer that with this input, you should have this output. And what I am going to do is to repeat this information to the computer again and again and again and again and again. There is no more data. This is my data set. This is the only input that I have and the only output that I have. And I am going to give this information again and again and again to the neural net. 
until these Ws make sense. And the next time that I ask for any of this, the result is going to be the correct one. What are you using the X or? Why are you using something like this? Number one, because the inputs are going to be always two numbers and the output is exactly those two numbers. So I have two dimensions and two categories. It's the easy example that I could have. And well, the fact that two ones and two zeros give me the same result, help me to separate, to ask the computer to identify when two things are identical or when two things are different. Classification is what I am looking for. If I want to teach this, or if I want to teach the and, or if I want to teach the or, or if I want to teach whatever other thing you have with columns, three columns, the only thing that you need to do in my program, the program here, is to change the arrays at the top. Do we understand the lines 102 and 100? Do we understand that those lines, the two and the three, are basically the tables that I show you here and there? The input is an array with two numbers in each row, one, two, three, four rows. And the last, second one is an array with only one column, one number in each row, four rows. Is the, is the Java representation of the draws that I showed you before, right? Inputs and outputs. Next, uh, an object. Did you notice the object, the parameters for the object? Two, three, one. Do you remember the picture that I showed you? What could be those two, three, one? Two inputs? Three neurons? The numbers that we need to remember, right? Inputs, outputs, neurons. Okay. I am sending those to the constructor. We need to review the constructor later, but it's going to be like, okay, that is an object with those elements. Three neurons, two input, one output. Okay. Did you notice the for loop? For loop how many times? A lot, right? That for loop from the line 105, go down the thing that the main is going to be doing is this repeating to the neural net training 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 and i am going to be here with you training you repeating you things a lot of times part of the learning right uh, this is the part that is going to take a lot of time. Uh, more bigger that number, more time that the computer needs to do the things inside. That is the part that you want to do with GPUs or with some kind of technology that makes these things faster. But this is going to be my lab. Anyway, inside of the loop, what is happening? Mean square error, a local variable. Oh, it looks like in some point you're going to calculate the error. Uh, at the beginning, zero. Okay, I don't care. Uh, there is another for loop. Uh, something is going to happen with the current input. What is the length of the current input? That loop is going to run for every row. In this example, I have only two columns, but if I have more, what I need to do is for every single input, do something. Uh, what is that something? Did you notice the comment forward, error, back? Forward, like forward propagation. Error, like calculate the error of the final result. Backward, like recalculate all the Ws. Forward propagation, call the method, call the method forward propagation. And what the method needs, the inputs. Which inputs? The current row. Right? 
Because remember, I have several. The current one, okay. When you finish, calculate the error. Uh, calculate the error. Uh, yes. Uh, tell me, according with a bunch of things that I have, my four outputs, tell me with the output that you give me and the ones that I have, there is a difference. Yes, there is a difference. Uh, help me to calculate the MSE. Uh, why? Because I need that one to the next step, the important one. Everything here is garbage. This is the line for the learning. This is the line for all the crazy things that we review in math. Everything else is just apply the model, calculate, calculate the error. Okay, learn, right? Finish. And after you do this, calculate the error again. This is going to be the final error. This is going to be whether or not your network learn to do the identification. This is the one that I report at the end as my learning, okay. right? Don't worry, you're going to have the source code that I am going to add you to run this step by step, the book, understand each line. But so far, I want to give you kind of the big picture, clear. Main, the data, forward propagation, error, backward propagation. Okay, easy. Let's see the details. Uh, according with this, the first thing that you call was the constructor. The first thing that you did was this thing here. Before starting with anything, you do a calling in this place, a calling to this method. Remember the numbers, two, three, one. Two inputs, three neurons in the layer, one output. Do we understand what is happening from the lines 14 to 25? Uh, Tell me, 15, what is that total weight, blah, blah, blah? Why total weight is input time filing two times three plus three times one? Remember the draw? Remember this? Tell me, how many variables W do you need? Because we need an array for the W, right? Three Ws? for each one W for each of the inputs. So it's going to be a W for this input, a W for this input, a W for this one, a W for this one, a W for this one, and a W for this one, but also a W for this one, and a W for this one, and a W for this one. Input, time, hiding, plus, hiding, time, output. Three plus six. Ah, you're calculating the size of your arrays. Yes. And my array of Ws is going to be nine. Oh, you're calculating your total nodes. Mm -hmm. My total nodes. Uh, all the things that I have as a source for a line. Ah, you are calculating or you are storing your parameters that you receive as a parameters for the constructor in your global variables. Remember my global variables that I showed before. Input, hidden, output. A constructor store values in global variables. Initialize the arrays, an array with total nodes, an array with total weights, an array of bias. Uh, remember each node have an equation and each node have a number of Ws, but each node is going to have this constant, 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 constant at the end of the equation. And we need to store the Ws because they are going to change. 
but also we need to take care of the constant because they are going to change also. My array for the Ws, my array for the bias, my constant learning rate outside, and my array for the outputs that I am going to be calculating. That is what I have. Ah, wait. Do you remember the bias and the weights that they can be equal to a constant or random numbers? Here. Random numbers. Bias random. And my Ws, the initial values, literally equal to mat dot random. Bye. Well, now, mat, but let's play fancy mat dot, dot random, but let's make them move around 0.5. This is fancy thing. You can remove it. The only thing that happens if you remove this minus is going to take more time for the values to get correct. So the error is going to be bigger for more time. But I am just helping a little bit the equation. You can play with this, remove it. You can play with this, change this for zeros. One, put a constant number. Uh, what is going to happen? Probably you're not going to find the correct result. Probably you're going to increase the error rate or decrease depending on how long you keep the program running. But this is just for you to play. Clear, constructor, variables, initial values. Okay, if you remember the constructor, after the constructor finish, the next thing that I have here is that I start the loop. And inside of the loop, forward, error, back. Forward. Do you remember? Forward is all about calculate the result. Let's start with the input that I have, one input. Uh, zero 01 or zero 00 or 11, one, one of the inputs. And using these Ws and bias that I have here, the initial ones, calculate the output. Run the network, right? Do you think that this source code is running the network? What do you need to do to run the network? Hopefully, you agree with me. Number one, process the input layer because everything is going to start here. Number two, process this layer, the hidden one. And at the end, process the output. <coughs> that is the question for the solution of the net, right? Input, hidden, hidden could be more than one. In this case, we are going to keep with one. And the output, instructions, yeah. Why there was an array for the bias? Isn't it, there should be a constant value. I'm getting confused. What's the bias? Is it a key or the W? It's going to have a W, but it's a constant number. It's a number. It's an array because we need that number different from each of the nodes. So it's just one way to store that number uh, in one place. Uh, doesn't matter how many nodes we have. Similar I did with the Ws. It's an array for all of them, but there are more Ws that and bias. Do we need bias for input? Well, we need the bias and we need the initial values of the Ws to calculate the first time the result, right? We need to have values for everything. So what we did is random the Ws, also random the bias. So everything that we are not receiving, everything that is not an input, initial thing, random. Everything is random except my x. The x, in this case, I only have x1 and x2. x1 is going to be 0 or 1. x2 is going to be 0 or 1. And I have these four different combinations. So for the equation that we are solving right now is use an equation with these two guys, nothing here, and just plus another w and the bias. That is what we are implementing, literally. Good? Process the input. Tell me what is happening in the lines 37 to 39. Anything important?
to make things easy, something that you're going to notice down is I am doing each of these, the input, and node. I am going to think that these two are nodes in the same way that these are nodes, and therefore these have outputs in the same way that the others have outputs. Why? Just because it's going to be easy to implement what you are looking down. It's going to be easy to have, okay, node, output, input. Node, output, input. Node, output, input. Just to make everything the same way later. Nothing is happening there. The only thing that is happening is my inputs, the values that you remember that there are zero or one, the line. I am going to copy those two as the value for the first two nodes in my net. The first two nodes, yeah, because I am going to consider these two also a node. Professor, there are no nodes in the neural net. In the implementation, they are going to be, no one is going to notice. Good. Copy the values, the input. Good. What is happening for the 40 to the 47, the other loop there? 41 to 47. Hmm. It's a loop. Zero to three. Oh, for each node in the net, finally something is going to happen. Zero to three. Zoom equal to what? Okay, I am going to have this variable zoom, and this variable is going to be equal to the bias. The bias where? The bias in this node. Okay, zoom is going to be equal to that constant. Ah, okay, uh, it looks like I am going to do this addition and I am starting with the result is equal to the constant, just to start. After that, another for loop. Did you notice what this for loop is doing? This plus this and can continue as many W's and input you have. <coughs> you are solving the equation because here in 45, what you have is the addition of D plus D plus the constant was there before. What is the next thing that you need to do after you have the addition of that equation? Oh, zoom was this temporal variable that stored this and use this value as a parameter for this function that we already know that we need it. And then the result we store it in our array of outputs. So you have zero, one. And the next thing that you're going to have in that array is the output of this node. That is the sig mode of all that equation. And the next thing that you're going to have is the, the output of this node and the output of this node and so on. Same array. 48. Uh, we are assuming that we have only one layer. So we are assuming that this is done, no more internal layers. You can imagine that another for loop is needed here if you have more layers. This, uh, the output. Another loop. Zero, two. The nodes, zero to one. So this is going to happen one time only. Okay, that is good. I could have more outputs, but this is going to happen only one time. So I can remove this for loop for my particular network. Nothing is going to happen, but if I remove this, I do not have the opportunity to add more nodes here. So I can keep this one. It's going to run one time, no problem. One time is going to happen this. What is going to happen one time? Ah, did you notice this initialization? The bias? Oh, again, we're putting the K 
this case in a variable. And then another for loop for something. Do we understand what is this something? The loop that is going to start in this number input layer. This loop is going to start in input layer. How many input layers do we have? I am going to start in two, and I am going to move forward to input layers plus hiding layers. So it's going to move from two to five. Why? What are you doing? Remember that we have in one single array all the nodes, and remember that we put as a node the input. And basically, what we want to do now is to use this output, this output, and this output. And therefore, these outputs are two, three, and four. Uh, this is the plus two, plus two, plus two. Why you come? Complicated things like this. Why not zero to the number of nodes in the input layer? Because having one array is better than having two, because make the things easy to process. Performance is important. We're making the software complicated, but the performance is going to be better, faster. From the two to the five, what I am going to do? These are going to be the values for my variable. The same thing that I did above, but now is this output multiplication for one W, this output multiplication for the W, this output multiplication for the W is exactly the same equation, but now for the output now. Uh, that means that later you're going to do the sig mode. And that means that you're going to store the value in some place. Please. Trivial for loops with arrays, right? Okay, but this one was the forward propagation. This was just for calculating with the inputs and my random number, one output. You can implement this in several different ways. It's just random numbers, inputs, calculate, give me the final result, put that in the array, done. What we did after this, we call this method for the error. Uh, I am going to move. The error I think is easy to figure out. I am going to show you later. But after the error, remember if the error is still big, if the error is still there and it's going to be there for the first time, we're going to call the backward propagation. Remember that the backward propagation is the one with the derivatives. The one with the complication. However, something that we already did before is we transform these derivatives to use linear algebra. Remember, we solve the equation, we solve the derivative for the particular case, and we transform that to use matrix multiplication. This is backward propagation for my neural net. Really? Tell me what is happening here. Um, variables from the 59 to the 62. Uh, did you notice that we need an array to store the derivatives of the weight? Mm -hmm. And did you notice that the size is basically the same size of the array that have the weight? So we have, we need an array with exactly the same number of elements that the one that we already have for the weights to store the derivatives of the weight. We need that, right? Why we need that? Because we're going to calculate the partial derivatives. And for the partial derivative, we calculate the derivative of the error regarding the derivative or regarding the value of each of the Ws. You don't need to know all of that, but you need to know that you need the derivative for each of the Ws. And that is what we are going to calculate. What you received before, what I shared with you before in some slides, the equation, your work in software, you do not need to understand the equation. It's a good idea that you understand the equation, but if you do not understand the equation, the only thing that you need to do is to program the equation. And the programming of the equation is some variables with derivatives, including the error, the W, and the bias. The bias is going to be included there to do calculation. And then 
start working. Start working. Can you explain to me what is happening between 64 and 75? 64 and 75 is happening all the mic. 64 and 75 is all this derivation happening. And remember, that is matrix multiplication. That is the equation that I give you in one of the previous slides, remember. I give you the example for one of the W's, not all of them, but you can replace numbers. Can you explain to me this part of the code? Can I ask you, like software engineers, is use a for loop? What is happening there? Can you go back from the source code to the explanation of what are the equations running there? Can you prove to me that the equation that is running there is really the one that I showed you before in some kind of light? And even if I didn't show you the equation, can you figure out what is happening in that part of the source code? Because you know the variables and you know for loops for sure. Forget about neural networks. Forget about machine learning. Use as a question for your programming interview, what is happening in those 10 lines of code? What is going to be the result of the first time that you execute those lines of code for the backward propagation? Because remember, this is running still with random numbers in the bias, with random numbers in the Ws, and with the first input that you take. And the first input was zero, zero. If I remember correctly, that was the first row that I showed you. And the output is one. You do not need the output. You have the input, the random numbers. You calculate an output. That output for sure was not zero. You have the distance between zero, that should be the output, and whatever you calculate. And then happened this, and what is this? Probably you cannot answer like a programming interview, like right now, uh, if I give you a marker and I ask you to put in the whiteboard the questions, probably not exactly a good idea. But can you do the homework? Calculating the error between the value that we receive and the value that we have in the output, and then we're multiplying the error into uh, array minus array squared, the value in the error. Taking the derivative of the total weight of the current mode. Uh, that is correct. And do you remember what was backward propagation? Do you remember that the backward propagation was basically the error? And moreover, you remember that the error what is the value that is correct then minus the value that we calculate and the value that we calculate was whatever you get for the plus the constant but for the output in particular each of these inputs It really another six mode equation with the addition of here. This is for the output, the six mode of another six mode. This is for the layer in the middle. For the layer in the middle, these are really my inputs. In the minimum case, you have this derivative of the error function, and this error function is a function of a function because the output is an addition of the result of the same function, but applied to the nodes in the middle. And that is the minimum scenario, because if you have more layers, this go down in that way. But exactly that description is what you're reading, is what you have before. And the only thing that you need to, you do not need to know, really, the calculation of derivatives. So at the end, the derivative is an equation. What we did before, what you do, is to solve the equation on paper. 
outside of the computer. The computer do not calculate the derivative. The computer have inside the implementation of this derivative solved in an equation that is plain linear algebra. And that is what the computer is doing. Yes. But the problem is so trivial. Our neural network will just memorize the input and output. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, the problem is so trivial. The neural network will just memorize the input and output. Yep. Uh, in this is, in this scenario is very trivial. I am just showing you kind of the process for it. But this one, uh, the reason because we are using the x or not the and or the or is the other two are more trivial. This is the only one that creates some kind of challenge and needs very quotation mark challenge. But they work the process the same. Yes. Um, so is this basically? Uh like a library that only implements just like three layers. Like if I wanted four layers, it'd be like another layer. Correctly. I am showing you like how to implement this single linked list. But if you want a double linked list, then a different implementation is needed. I am showing you how to implement this library in which you can create neural net with only one layer in the middle. That's it. Very trivial, uh, more layers. You can imagine the things that are going to happen. You are not going to figure out everything. Obviously, having more than one layer is not just adding another for loop. But I want to give you the idea of what you have inside. Working with arrays, loops, a lot of loops, period. I really want you to review what is happening here. And I am going to ask you for your first homework. I really want you to play with this source code. The source code is going to be online. You can get the source code or you can copy uh, the images. But homework, homework number one. Can you explain to me, well, can you explain to a high school student, someone that understand matrix, someone that understand arrays and loops, what is happening there? between the 65 and the 74. Can you explain to me what happened and how this equation, multiple derivatives that you have in my previous lecture, use become these 10 lines of code? What I am asking you is for an exercise of reviewing the source code, thinking, and do your best explaining this in a paper with your own words. Let me be clear. I am asking you to create a paper. There is no correct answer per se or wrong answer per se. I am going to review that have some logic. The only thing that I want you to, to show me that you think about this, that you take some time to review this. Previous slides, these slides, and you match the things. My only request, you are going to submit this to Canvas a paper explaining this, how the backpropagation works, how the code this represent this. Be careful with the academic integrity. Do not copy paste things from online. Do not copy paste things from your partners. The software Canvas is going to review for similarities between your partners and online. I am asking you your own words. Again, it's very hard that you are going to get the answer incorrect. You think different, you are going to explain things different. Maybe I am going to highlight something that, hey, this is a very good explanation. Check, could help everyone. But obviously, if you make a medium explanation, that is better than do a copy paste of something because the copy paste of something, academic integrity is going to be a zero, remember. Clear, homework, explaining how this works, your own words. It's going to appear on Canvas with more details of what you're going to submit and how is your first homework is due date in a week. Clear. I am publishing these things. You can review the other method, the one with errors. Moreover, again, you can run the source code. Any question, let me know. Thank you.